Hello guys. So we'll be starting with uh, time response analysis. Okay. Now, what is time response analysis actually? See, uh, we already dealt with uh, transfer function. Okay, how to derive transfer function? How to derive the input output relationship and all? Okay, we have seen uh, several uh, uh, ways to find the transfer function. Okay, now this is the uh, in here what we'll do is uh, we'll have a response that is response analysis with respect to time. Basically, we are concerned with the output variation with respect to time. How the response is varying with respect to time. Okay. Now, here while varying, okay, since it is varying with respect to time, for the initial part, it will have the transient analysis or the transient response. Okay. And for the next part, it will be having steady state response. Okay. That is I can write my total response CT as CTT transient CTR you write transient which will be the function of time plus steady state response which will be independent of time. Now what are transient response and steady state response? Okay. Now see transient means what? Something that is temporary like flickering of light. Okay. Once you switch on the light you will observe flickering of the light. Okay. That is temporary. But the steady state means once it start glowing brightly it will retain its permanent state. Okay. It will retain its permanent state and that is what called steady state. Steady state means somewhat something that retains till time t tends to infinity. Okay. So, this for example, if I give second example like a fan. Okay. So, once you start the fan, you set the dial input 4, it starts rotating. Okay. But it doesn't reach the steady state speed quickly. Right. It takes some time. Okay. To reach that steady state speed. That time is called transient time. Okay. For example, in AC, when you switch on the AC, it directly doesn't uh, gain the temperature of whatever you have set with the remote. It takes some time. Okay, that is called the transient time. Transient time is that is temporary and that needs to decay out very quickly. For example, if I am telling that uh, my bulb is flickering for uh, say large uh, duration. That means this bulb is not a good, uh, is not good control system. Okay. Any system where the transient period is more will not be a good control system. Okay. For a good control system, I need to have the transient die out quickly. Okay. Only if the transient is dying out quickly, I can say that the system is fast. The speed of the response of the system would be fast. And the output will be re reaching to its steady state faster. Okay. So, that is what I expect from a system. So, if I am telling uh, limit t tends to 0, Ct, okay, means I am getting the transient time. What I am getting? Transient time. But when I am doing t tends to infinity, Ct, I will be getting only CSS. That is the steady state part. Okay. So, this is transient which stay only for t tends to 0 or greater than 0. Okay. Transient state or transient response. This is steady state response. Steady state means it will be constant. It will be independent of time. The response will be constant and independent of time. Steady state response. Okay, so let us see a graph and observe how it vary, uh, it is uh, having a variation. Okay, so basically here what we are you know observing is how fast or slow, 
हाउ फास्ट और स्लो आउटपुट इज वेरिंग एंड रीचिंग टू द रीचिंग टू द स्टडी स्टेट इनपुट दैट यू हैव सेट स्टडी स्टेट इनपुट कॉट इट ना इफ आई यू नो प्लॉट अ ग्राफ ऑफ रिस्पॉन्स वर्सेस टाइम यूल सी दैट नाउ द रिस्पॉन्स वुड हैव यू नो वैरिड प्रोपोर्शनल टू द टाइम बट इट इज नॉट डूइंग सच वट इट इज डूइंग इज इट इज वैरिंग एक्सपोनशियली बिकॉज इट इज हैविंग अ ट्रांसेंट रिस्पॉन्स ओके सो इट विल वेरी एक्सपोनशियली एंड आफ्टर सम टाइम ओके इट विल रीच टू द स्टडी स्टेट it will reach to the steady state so it should have varied like this but it has it has not varied like this okay that means if i have if i have set my steady state input like this this is my uh, input or i can say steady state input that is constant steady state state input okay okay so this is the graph of response versus time that is i am doing time response analysis now if you see the if if it would have increased linearly the response would have increased linearly with respect to time it would have reached faster okay but now if you see it has it it will reach uh, or the rise time okay that is the time taken by the response to reach to its steady state input will be somewhat more okay but even after going to steady state this will be constant but it will not be equal to steady state input this was the steady state input and this is steady state output and the upper one is steady state input so always there would be some difference in between the steady state input and steady state output and that occurs at uh, at steady state that is why there is a error that is observed and that is called as steady state error that is called as steady state error so the prior thing is initially you'll be having transient response that is temporary okay that is ctr and for the next period you'll be having steady state response and you'll be doing steady state analysis for the transient response you'll be doing basically stability analysis transient stability uh, transient analysis is nothing but stability analysis because here you'll be able to see what is the operating range of frequency for which you know what is the operating time for which it is rising and re reaching to the steady state okay that is called tr transient time okay because in the transient time the response has to increase and settle to its final value the response has to increase and settle to its final value in the initial time and that is called the transient time and that is a period where we do the transient response analysis okay so it is basically a stability analysis transient analysis is nothing but stability analysis we get a information about bandwidth tr and speed of response okay we get these three things from the transient response but the steady state response analysis is nothing but it is a error analysis error analysis now since the error is occurring since the error is occurring at steady state and it is between the input and output i can say that this error is nothing but steady state error okay so in a particular system when i am doing time response analysis i have to cover two time times like one is a transient time the other is a steady state period in the prior uh, stage i have to do transient analysis or the stability analysis where i'll be knowing how fast or slow my response is settling to the final value secondly we'll be doing
steady state analysis which is called error analysis that will be estimating the error between the input and output at steady state. I am predicting the error between input or deviation. What is error? Deviation. Deviation of output and input at steady state. So, this is for the estimation of error and this is for the estimation of bandwidth and TR, rise time. Okay. So, this is all about time response analysis. Okay. Now, we will be knowing what is the type at type of the system and what is the order of the system. Okay, I think you got the basic idea of what is transient state, what is steady state and how I want the transient to decay very quick, uh, very quickly. I don't want this stage to be, you know, uh, greater. The lesser the transient time, more stable the system will be. Okay, so that is the transient should decay very quickly. Okay. The transient amplitude should decay very quickly. Okay. And only if it is decaying, I can say that my region of operation is bounded and I would say that the system is stable. Okay. Now, let us discuss about type and order of the system. Now, what is type? I already told you guys that type is the number of open loop poles. Okay. The number of open loop poles at the origin. Okay. Number of open loop poles at the origin is called the type of the system. Now, open loop poles you can find only with the open loop transfer function, right? That is, even if you are having closed loop transfer function, you need to convert that closed loop transfer function to open loop transfer function in order to find the type of the system. Okay. So, first of all, I would write the type is equal to number of open loop poles of open loop transfer function. Okay. It is determined by the transfer function GSHS. It is determined from the transfer function GSHS. It gives the information about steady state response. or it affects the steady state response analysis. Got it? So, whenever you want to find the type, you have to have, you need to have open loop transfer function. If you are not having, you have to convert the closed loop transfer function to open loop transfer function and then you have to determine uh, how many number of open loop holes are there at origin. At origin. Okay. This is very important. At origin. Okay. Then, uh, if you are able to find GSHS, that is open loop transfer function, okay, open loop transfer function, you will be able to estimate the type of the system. Once you are able to estimate the type, you will be able to, you know, estimate, uh, you will be able to perform steady state response analysis and you will be able to estimate steady state error as well. I will show you how, uh, by finding the type, you will be able to find the steady state error, okay. Now, see, order, order of the system, okay. Now, order of the system is, see, order is equal to highest power of S, highest power of S in the characteristic polynomial. See, in most of the book, you will find, in most of the book, you will find that it has been written that type of the system is highest power of s in the denominator polynomial. Now, again they are considering that if uh, the, that the denominator polynomial will always be greater than the numerator polynomial, but this is not the case. It may be possible that the numerator polynomial is greater than the denominator polynomial. In that case, you have to consider the highest power of s in the numerator polynomial. So, I can't, you know, generalize the thing. So, better I should write the characteristic polynomial only because see if the numerator is greater than that ns equal to 0 will be the characteristic polynomial and if ds and if the denominator polynomial is greater then ds equal to 0 is the characteristic polynomial. So, I am defining order as the highest power of s in the denominator polynomial. Okay. Because numerator or the denominator can decide the order of the system provided whichever uh, polynomial is greater. Okay. Degree polynomial is greater. So, it is determined from, it is determined from,
closed loop transfer function although uh, open loop transfer function uh, order and closed loop transfer function order uh, most of the time it will be same okay but uh, anyhow it is determined from closed loop transfer function and that is nothing but gs by 1 plus gs hs okay and it is order is used to perform transient analysis to perform transient analysis so in the next lecture i'll be doing steady state response analysis where i'll be estimating the steady state error for different type of input for different type of system for uh, some standard signals okay and i'll also i'll also be doing transient analysis on different order like zero order first order second order okay so we'll be doing this but as of now you know type and order of the system okay so here i'll be able to estimate the tr because how fast or slow it is rising i'll be able to estimate and hence i'll be able to estimate the bandwidth because bandwidth is nothing but 0.35 by tr once i'm able to uh, estimate tr i'll be able to estimate bandwidth and i'll be able to know the operating frequency range operating time range and the speed of the response of the system okay so all these things we can know okay